Hi, my name is Dr. John Lawrence, and I'm a chiropractic neurologist and I work at Advanced Rejuvenation. We're part of a clinical team that includes acupuncture, medical, myself, chiropractic, neurology. And we work as a team to provide some of the most cutting edge and advanced alternative care for neurological conditions, um, such as Parkinson's and Alzheimer's and traumatic brain injuries, uh, vestibular disorders. Um, I would invite you to take a look at um, some of the different procedures that we do here. I'd like to just kind of touch on a few um, extremely exciting cutting-edge things that we're uh, doing here at Advanced Rejuvenation. One of the things that I think is really important to understand with Parkinson's in particular is that these people tend to lose the dopamine producing cells particularly in an area in their basal ganglia called the substantia nigra. Now, the, 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 the sufferer of Parkinson's will begin to have things like slowness of movement. They'll, they call that bradykinesia. And they'll also start to get what's called tremors. And um, so besides the slowness of movement and the tremors, they'll also have freezing. So they'll be walking and they'll kind of come to a doorway a lot of times and then just they won't be able to move. Um, and then their shuffling gait is also something that you'll see with Parkinson's. And these are all um, symptoms related to low dopamine levels in the brain. So what are ways that we can naturally get dopamine to be elevated in, in a brain that's suffering from the disease of Parkinson's? Well, one of the most exciting things that we've begun doing here at Advanced Rejuvenation is using a substance called NAD. Now, NAD is short for nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. And NAD has a long history of use for patients um, with low dopamine levels, and particularly um, quite a history with addiction, because most addictions have something to do with dopamine. And so addiction centers will often use these NAD infusions um, to reestablish normal dopamine. But here at Advanced Rejuvenation, we've actually found that this can be very exciting for someone suffering from Parkinson's disease. Now, how does it work? Well, NAD is a substance that is very important to catalyze most enzyme activations. And like I've written here, there's an enzyme that's called tyrosine hydroxamine. And tyrosine hydroxamine is the enzyme that's responsible for converting tyrosine to dopamine. And this enzyme is a huge problem for most people with Parkinson's disease. And so this is actually at the root cause of low dopamine levels uh, besides the degradation of the cells in the substantia nigra. And so by upregulating the conversion of tyrosine into dopamine, patient can start to get more of their own dopamine production back into place. And when you get more of your own dopamine, then there's less of a need for the dopamine medications, which is very exciting. So um, NAD infusions are very exciting. It's one of the different um, uh, treatment modalities that we use here for Parkinson's disease. Another treatment modality that we've been using here at Advanced Rejuvenation is something that I do personally. It's called functional cranial release. Now, what's really important is when, when Parkinson's hits the brain, it starts to affect a lot of different generators which relate to eye movements and um, the ability for the eyes to move properly, not the eyes having proper visual acuity, but their movements, one of them is called a saccade, which is a, a fast eye movement, and another one is a pursuit. And a lot of these have generators in the um, deep brain stem, and these are affected with Parkinson's. And we can see these with tests that we run called a saccadometer, where we'll see something called an omnipause intrusion. And this has to do with that substantia nigra not allowing saccades to be normal. So what will happen is the eyes won't be able to make normal fast movements and it's only something that's detectable with a test like a saccadometer. You can't see this very well visually. However, this can make drastic negative impacts to someone's uh, brain that has Parkinson's 
in particular something called collicular maps. Now, I haven't seen a Parkinson's patient that didn't have an issue with poor collicular maps, but basically this is what it is. These are grids that you make of your body and the environment. And you need an accurate eye movement that goes to a target and holds your eye on a target for at least a moment in order to build these maps. Otherwise, what happens is you get an expansion of your collicular maps. And what that means to you if, you, if you're dealing with Parkinson's, is that instead of you having a very specific delineated idea or map in your head of your shoulder or a finger joint or your wrist or your neck and all the different levels in your neck, these are expanded. And so instead of just being able to move the shoulder joint, things will start to move more um, together. And so this has a negative impact on a lot of the tightness that you feel in Parkinson's. A lot of times patients' necks are tight, their shoulders are tight, a lot of their muscles become very rigid and tight. And a lot of this has to do with these collicular maps becoming um, expanded. It'd be kind of like if you took a picture and you had a, a slow shutter speed and the picture kind of got smeared on the picture. This is what the brain starts to perceive. Now, I'm talking about this in particular because this is a huge part of what we look at, but it's one of many areas functionally that we might look at with someone with Parkinson's where we can start act actively activating the brain with specific manipulations and exercises to basically reestablish these collicular maps. They're actually very easy to fix. They, they, they clear up very quickly and they update very quickly. So it's a very, very powerful way to um, improve someone's brain function without any drugs and not, without any surgery. So that's very exciting. Um, so we do utilize something called functional chiropractic neurology and I would invite you to take a look at functionalcranialrelease.com and look at some of the different videos or some of the um, information I might have online about Parkinson's and the use functionally with some of these different specific neurological exercises. And again, I always do a free consultation. If you want to reach out to me and call the office or you want to email me at askdrjl at gmail.com, um, I always respond to these emails with any questions that you might have. If you have any questions or you'd like a free consultation, please contact our office. And remember, if healing is possible, consider it to be within your reach. Bye for now. For more information about these exciting regenerative therapies, you can find us at advancedrejuvenation.us. You can also contact us by phone at 941-330-8553 or email us at info at advancedrejuvenation.us. If you found the information on this video helpful, please like us and share us on Facebook. You just never know whose life you might touch. Well, thanks for joining us. And remember, if healing is possible, consider it to be within your reach. Bye for now.